anyways let's install the front fender and see how the front gap is gonna be here all right this fender is also in but, but i haven't fastened it with all the fasteners yet because here for the front we're gonna have to wait for the bonnet to come and then decide how far in or out we want it i just did this part around the door to make sure that we can align the door more or less with the fenders and the gap is pretty small here i think we need to move the door backwards a little bit more so we can have a little bit smaller gap here but also we're not gonna touch here you see here we have interference so for this interference we're gonna have to move the door a little bit in. We still have some room here. It hits here, but this we can adjust. We can grind a little bit here. That's not a big deal. So the door needs to go a little bit further in, I think. I don't know, or it matches pretty well. The thing is the fender can't go anywhere else. The fender is quite determined here at the A post because of uh, these mounts on the inside. Inside the A-post we have this and we have one more up here somewhere, I can't see it right now, but you see how they are, they are flush now. The fender mount is flush with this sheet metal, so we can't adjust anything from here. So the position of the fender in front or back is determined by these two bolts there. You can't adjust that, it is where it is. Also, this in and out position is determined by this gap here. So the only thing that we can play with here is the door. So let's move it a little bit backwards. And I'm going to show you a little trick with that. So to move the door backwards now, in this situation, we have two options. To loosen both hinges and move it backwards and tighten them. But then we're going to lose everything that we've done so far. So if we want to do it an easy way, we move one hinge at the time. For example, we loosen the bottom hinge, we lift the rear end of the door up, and then we tighten the hinge. Now the rear end is too high. Now we can loosen the top end and drop the rear end of the door down, and that moves the top hinge also towards the back. And now we have a bigger gap there, and we are at the same position where we were. Now, in theory, that is going to change also the height a little bit, because if you loosen the bottom first, now the two hinges are like that. And by moving the bottom hinge to the left, it's not going to go only to the left, but it's also going to go a little bit high, because it's going to start drawing a circle, right? So it's going to go backwards and up a little bit. And then when you tighten it and loosen the top hinge, it's going to do the same thing. When you start moving it backwards, it's not going to move only backwards, but it's going to move up because it's going to start drawing a circle. So technically, we're going to move the door a little bit backwards and up if we do that. Or the opposite, if we do uh, first the top hinge, we're going to drop the rear end and the front end is going to go down too. And then when we do the bottom end, it's going to go back and down. So the whole door is going to move backwards and down a little bit. So we have to decide which of the two we want to do. And I think we want to do the second because here uh, the door looks like a little bit higher than the, the fender. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen the top hinge first. We're going to move it backwards. We're going to tighten it. Then we're going to loosen the bottom hinge. We're going to move it backwards and we're going to tighten it. And we're going to try to keep this here leveled, which it's not anymore. Somehow it dropped. Anyway, so let's try to do that. So because of the weight of the door, I don't even need to drop it. I'm just going to loosen the top hinge and it's going to drop down automatically. So you see, it's down already. Okay, and now let's loosen the bottom end and lift the rear end up. Okay. 
Okay. And as you can see, that moved it a little bit backwards. Now we have a little bit bigger gap here. And this one is a little smaller. Actually, it is a little bit too small. I'd like it to be a little bit bigger. I'm talking about the top end. The bottom end, we know that it is not correct. We're going to have to move the fender forward, which normally you can't do unless, but in my case, I have to do it. So I'm going to cut the mount in the back and I'm going to re-weld it in the right place. So that's the next thing to do. But here now we have pretty much consistent gap and it barely passes. It's dangerously close if you ask me, but I, but I don't want to have bigger gap than that. Normally on the TR6s, this front gap is a little bit bigger just because of that, because of this design error here. If you ask me, this is a design error. So this is where we're gonna leave it. We're not gonna touch anymore this side. So we're gonna go on the other side and do the same thing for the other three panels. And then we're gonna put the bonnet and uh, boot lid, and we're gonna start lining up all the gaps everywhere. And I'll show you the procedure, my procedure for there, because I don't know if everybody follows this procedure, but it is my procedure and I'm pretty happy with it. All right, I moved the car here outside because it's a little bit wider and lighter and the shop is closed now, so it is okay if I work here. Anyways, this side is assembled as, as well. And there are few things here that bother me, but I'm not going to deal with them now. I want to install the bonnet and the boot lid, and then we're going to deal with all the gaps all together. Because let me show you what I'm talking about. So here, the front end, the gap is pretty small. I'd like it to be a little bit bigger, but here at the back, I don't have much room to go backwards. And this gap is a little bit V-shaped. I mean, it's open up there, it's closed down there. So it looks like I have to open this gap a little bit, but if I open this gap a little bit, to close this top gap, then this end is gonna drop down because what's gonna happen is gonna be... So we don't want that because we are already even lower. So what I think needs to happen is the wing, which means the whole rear end of the body needs to go a little bit up and the bottom gap is gonna stay the same. The top gap is gonna close a little bit like that. I know what you're gonna say. I have braces inside and that was the purpose of these braces. And we have adjusted them already once, I believe and we had the body perfectly aligned, all the gaps were perfect, but we had a lot of work done here in this area, remember? Not on the fender, on the inner fender. And even though I tried to keep all the time everything sturdy, I didn't cut out too much material to make it flimsy, obviously something moved because the body was perfectly aligned before. And that's normal, like it's not possible to keep it perfectly fine, but as long as during the process you constantly align your pa panels and make sure that everything fits still, it's okay. Because sometimes you put a panel in the wrong position and then from there you build everything else wrong and then you have to cut the whole car apart to make everything work again. So constantly, if you notice probably, I put on and off these panels I don't know how many times, probably 100 times. So what I think needs to happen is we're going to cut this brace here and then we're going to use the overhead crane. We're going to lift a little bit the rear end. We're going to close this gap and then we're going to weld the brace again. And that's how it's going to stay for painting and everything. The other problem here is the top of the door is a little bit further out than the wing. I think it needs to go further in, but if you remember what we said, to, for in and out, we use the part of the hinge at the door, but I'm already at the limit here. I can't go any further. For now, my idea is that I'm gonna have to take this hinge out and widen the hose so I can push it. Not much, it's like maybe in 16th of an inch, but I want it in because here, I don't like this part, how far it sticks. Obviously the wing and the door are different shapes, 
but when this goes when the door goes further in it's going to be pretty close so these are the two issues but again i'm not going to do anything yet i'm not going to adjust anything yet first i'm going to put the bonnet the boot lid and then we're going to start gap by gap adjusting everything uh, so here's our bonnet and this is the hinge and as usual i'm just going to remind you here that these three fasteners here cannot be way too long because they can poke through the outside but specifically this one here on the side should be a really short one because if you see the thickness here is very small on this size and i've seen many tr6s and even tr4s with a little nib right here so this can be longer like i think they are about an inch but the ones for the side are this long. okay so i have the hinges attached but they are pretty loose i attach them loosely so i can still adjust them it's a good idea to have a helper but today in the shop i'm alone so, so i'm gonna use this guy to help me actually i changed my mind it's too complicated with this guy there i'm just gonna use this cushion here hopefully it's gonna work for me if not you're gonna have to come and give me a hand please Fresh paint, I have no idea. Honestly, I have absolutely no idea. And now here through the grill, we can adjust it on these holes and mount it. Same on this side. It's gonna be a little bit of fiddling and that's why I'm concerned about when the car is painted. I really, really don't like this idea of assembling the car painted. I put the fasteners very loosely too, so the hinges are attached but loose. So now we can drop the bonnet, position it where we want it, and just with our screw gun from inside, we can tighten all these bolts. All right, so let me tell you my idea of how we adjust everything, even though we still don't have the boot lid, but I'll tell you what my idea is. So, as you know, we have all the panels installed, but some of them are pretty loose because we have to have a certain point to start from. So, obviously, there are two methods to adjust a gap. Let's say the gap between these two panels. One is move one panel, the other method is moving the other panel. But many people don't consider this third way of adjusting this gap, which is twisting the body a little bit, which is shimming it here or shimming it there and adjusting the height. Because imagine if we shim the body here, we lift the front end up, this gap is gonna close here. But will it? Maybe not, because this door is attached to the same A-post as the fender. So we're not gonna be able to adjust that. So we have to really consider what is attached where. For example, the rear end, if we shim that, the door is not attached to the B-post, so we're gonna adjust this gap, but not always everything works. So having that in mind, let's see what are our affixed points where we can't move one panel uh, or we can't adjust the gap by twisting the body. And that's only one place, which is here. This gap can only be adjusted in one way 
which is adjusting the bonnet. This won't move, twisting the body in any way won't change this gap. So this is the first gap in my method that, that we have to adjust. And again, this is not how to align gaps. This is how I align gaps. I always start by this gap here. So once this gap is aligned height-wise and, and width-wise, then our bonnet is also going to be in a position where we can't move it anymore because it's going to be aligned with the sail panel or seal panel, whatever. <laughs> the height between the fender and the bonnet, again, can be adjusted from the bonnet up and down, considering, again, that any movement here up and down is also going to affect that gap a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So when we're adjusting that gap from here, we are adjusting that gap from these hinges here. Once we, this is adjusted, we start adjusting the fenders, the width here. We can, we have a play on these bolts on the fender. We can put them in and out. We can't put them front and back. We can't move that in that direction. This is a fixed. Of course, once we have the bonnet and the two front wings attached, then we have to move to the door, see how that gap works. Once this gap is attached, uh, is corrected, we can correct the rear gap by moving the door up and down, twisting it, turning it, or in the worst case scenario, by uh, shimming the rear end of the body, then these gaps are going to be correct. The rear fenders too, they are pretty affixed where they are in the forward and backwards direction. Uh, they don't really move in and out too, so they are pretty a fixed point as well. So the only panels that we can play with that are created to be adjustable are doors, front wings and bonnet. But still, with tricking it a little bit, we can also play with the rear panels and with the boot lid. So that's my method. Also, about the position of the door, there's something very important, which is the windshield frame with the door glass. And that's also adjustable from the little bolts that hold the bracket over there. It is a little bit adjustable. And by the position of the glass, you have to make sure that they align perfect when the glass is all the way up, because sometimes there's interference. And when you shut the door with the glass all the way up, it might hit the frame and shatter. So that's also a point where you have to consider at this time. The hinges are tight, but unfortunately I can't make the bonnet fit properly. I'm playing with it for the last 20 minutes here off camera and I can't push it forward than that. It, it looks aligned here, but it can move a little bit more forward. And the reason I want to move it forward is because I don't have any gap here. Both sides. So I'm not sure why. But I'm going to try one more thing. We have another set of hinges here. These hinges here that I'm going to try with them. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to have to start widening holes and making it fit because right now it doesn't. All right, I changed my mind. I actually went ahead and enlarged the holes on the existing hinge. I'm just going to clean the burr. And even this slot here I enlarged because I don't know what would be uh, the difference between these hinges. They're pretty much the same, I don't know. So I decided not to waste time and enlarge this. So that's one done. I'm gonna mount it now and we're gonna install the other one. I just used the crane here to support the this side of the bonnet and took the hinge off. So I'm gonna put it back on and we're gonna take out the other one and do the same thing. Okay, both hinges are now back on the car and you can see now how much I moved it. You can see the slots are visible over there. So that might be actually too extreme, but we'll see. I haven't tested it yet. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. Why? Now I'm getting confused. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I went the wrong way. <laughs> okay. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, actually. So what you see here, the, sl the part of the slots that you see here is the part that I extended. So I extended it the wrong way. I was supposed to extend it in the other direction. <laughs> That's what's happening. All right, Elin, back to square one. So I have to extend it that way so the hinge can come this way. I remember that here we were exactly where we are now. So now we have to extend it the other direction so we can actually, this ridge here needs to be even further than the flange of the hinge. Oh, okay, one more time. <laughs> so now we are hopefully in the right direction because you can see now this ridge is deeper than this um, flange and the same thing there. You can see how much of the slot is now visible. This shouldn't be correct actually, because this ridge should be exactly where it was before, according to our 73 TR6. I opened it here so I can see, and you can see that it is exactly how it was on the other one. And this one as well. So anyways, for some cars it's one way, for some cars it's another. That only comes to tell you that you can't just take fenders or doors or bonnets or whatever from one cart and slap them on the other and expect that they will fit. Everything is variable. So let me set you here and let's see this time if it's gonna work or not. Wow, still needs more actually. That's amazing. All right, third time lucky, hopefully. This time the ridge is way below this point. Here on the side, I even had to remove the washer because it doesn't fit anymore. We're gonna still put a washer, but I'm gonna have to flatten one part because I don't like this. So we're gonna put the washer there, don't worry. Just for the test now, we're gonna go without it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> 